Hello friends, in this video I am going to discuss about introduction of hash function and properties and characteristics of hash functions. Topic of network security. So introduction of hash function. Now first of all definition of hash function is in hash function capital H denotes the hash function except a variable length block of input data called as M. Here M denotes as a message and produce the fixed size hash value. Now see in this block diagram this block diagram is the hash function block diagram. So this is the message M. The length of the message is variable. It may be 512 bits, it may be 600 bits, it may be 900 bits or anything. So this block of data is given input to the uh, hash function capital H and it uh, produce a hash value. This is called small h. This is fixed length value. So it can be represented as h is equal to h of m. Here m is the message, h is the hash function process and small h is the hash value. So now small h is the fixed length hash value. When hash function provides security, this is called cryptographic hash functions. Hash function protect the integrity of the message. We all know that integrity means if message should not be altered by the any other users. If encryption process is applied on messages with hash function, it is also provide authentication and confidentiality. Uh, whenever we have achieved authentication, integrity and confidentiality, so we can say uh, apply the concept of digital signature in the hash function. So we can say it is hash code based digital signature. Now this is one diagram to understand the uh, better understanding of the hash function working. So this is one message. Uh, using this message, we have created one hash function. This is hash function value. It is appended to the message reached at receiver side and receiver uh, appended value will be removed from the message and stored anywhere. And then a new hash value generated from the message and compare both the values. Now check if both values are same, then receiver accept the message. Otherwise, receiver dic uh, discard that message. Next, a hash function provides a property that has function applied on variable amount of data m. We have already discussed about that input of the hash function is variable length and then it produces the fixed amount of output data. We can say it is hash value small h. Now see one example. Here uh, one message is fox and the hash function created. This is the hash function. Now another message is the red fox runs across the ice. This is the another example. Now hash function created of this function is this. So uh, hash value of both the message are same, but the length of the both the message are variable. So this is one of the property of hash function. Next one. If any bits or bit changes in the data, the whole hash function output data will also change. It means if I have changed any of the uh, word or any of the single bit, so it produces different hash function. Now see another example. Uh, one is that the red fox runs across the ice and second one is the red fox walks across the ice. Now generate hash function of both the input message and both are different. Now you can see over here. So this is the another property of the hash function. So if there is any change in the bits or any bit, a whole hash function output data will also change. So hash value will be changed. Next, cryptographic hash function is one way function which is practically infeasible to invert. It means uh, this is the message folks now generate a new uh, an hash value from the hash function. Now, uh, if I have this hash value, I cannot get the original message from the hash value. So this is called one way function. So which is practically infeasible to invert. The most popular hashing algorithm is MD5 and SHA. MD5 is message digest file and SHA is secure hash algorithm. Now properties of hash function. First property compression. We have already discussed about that. Uh, there is a variable length of input is given, but fixed size value 
of the has, uh, fixed size hash value will be produced. So compression. As per the compression property, output of hash function is much smaller than the size of input. If size is 1024 bit, uh, if you are using SHA1, there is 160 bit hash value is generated. Next one. Pre-image resistance. Pre-image resistance means difficult to find the input from the given hash function output. If uh, there is uh, one message, uh, hash function of this message is applied and generated hash value is x. So if x is given, it is difficult to message m. So this is called pre-image resistance or we can say it is one-way property. Now third one, weak collision resistance. If given message m1, in weak collision resistance means that it is difficult to produce another message M2 such that H of M1 is equal to H of M2. So we can say uh, there is two different message M1 and M2. So we cannot uh, same hash function will be generated using the different messages. So it means it is infeasible to find two different messages with the same hash value. Fourth one strong collision resistance. There is some difference in weak collision and strong collision. We will discuss later on. Strong collision resistance means that it is difficult to find any two different message that has value to the same value. It means it is hard to find M1 and M2 such that the same value H of M1 and is equal to H of M2. So here everybody think that weak collision and strong collision resistance are the same. There is small difference between them. Now strong and weak collision resistance are not the same. Weak collision resistance is bound to a particular input whereas the strong collision resistance applied to any two arbitrary inputs. So there is the uh, small difference between strong and weak collision resistance. Next characteristics of hash function. The first one it is quick to calculate hash value h for any given message it means x is equal to h of m now m is the message hash function is processed and hash value is generated x second one hash function h can be applied to the variable length of data block we have already discussed this is the one of the good characteristics of the hash function there is a small change in a message should change the hash value so this properties is mostly used for the check the integrity or verify the integrity of the message at receiver side Fourth one, hash function has one way property. It is impossible to generate message from given hash value. It means if any attacker get the uh, hash function of that message. So attacker cannot decrypt or cannot get the original message from that hash function. Fifth one, the hash function uses all the input of the data. If all the input of the data is not used in the hash function, so it may be generate same hash function. So we can say it is it may be generate a weak collision or strong collision resistance. Next one, the hash function uniformly distributes the data across the entire set of possible hash values. Why it is uniformly distributed? If it is not uniform uniformly distributes, uh, it may be happen weak collision or it may be happen strong collision resistance. And the last one, the hash function generates very different hash value for the similar message. If both the message are same, uh, hash value uh, should be different. Now simple hash function. Here there are two simple hash functions. All hash functions are operating using the same principle. Uh, now discuss about first one. First. The message file is like a simple input. It open a sequence on n bit blocks. It means if your message file is too long, so it is converted into uh, n bit blocks. Now second point of the first hash function. When input is processed only one block at the given time in iterative fashion to generate an n bit hash function. Now see one example. The simple hash function is the bit by bit XORing done of every block. Now see, uh, this can be shown, uh, shows the following ways. First one, the equation CI is equal to BI1 XOR BI2 XOR up to XOR with BIM. Now check this table. Uh, this is the block by block XORing. So here I can see first one CI is the CI is ith bit of hash function code. Now check this is block one, block two and this is block M. Now. Uh, all the blocks first bit is XORed with each other and it generates C1 or we can say this is CI 
because it is in general form next what is m m is the blocks how many blocks are created and n is the beat of uh, blocks for one block so m is the number of blocks in the input bij is equal to ith bit in jth block now check over here this is block 1 bit 1 so this is b11 so i can see uh, or i can say uh, first bit of the first block now this is the second bit of the first block so this is bij so b21 now xor operation perform with all the bits and it uh, generate the hash code c1 c2 up to cn when this operation perform it produce a simple parity for each bit location this process is known as redundancy check so this process is mostly used for the redundancy check next test function to increase the complexity and improve the performance use simple way one bit circular shift and also the rotation on hash value after the every block is processed so you have to permutation is performed inside the hash function to increase the complexity the steps are the summarized by as follow to increase the complexity this is another uh, hash function process first one set n bit hash value initially zeros next process the each and every successive n block of the data is as follow first one the current hash value is rotated to the left by one bit it means if uh, there are two x or pro uh, two blocks x or processes completed then uh, generated hash value is rotated to the left by one bit second one and perform the x or operation in between the block and the hash value so it increase the complexity and improve the performance of the hash function thank you for watching this video please like share and comment subscribe my channel on youtube chirag balodia press bell icon to get new video notification follow my blog edu resources thank you